what is up and welcome back to my channel so in this video i am going to be quickly just going through the accounts that i have my daughter set up with for her investments if you came from instagram then you know that i am trying to get her investments to ten thousand dollars before her 10th birthday which is at the end of november now if it doesn't happen before then oh well as long as it gets done before the end of the year i am totally okay with that but i know that a lot of you all are moms and you are wanting to save and invest for your babies so i'm just going to run through her accounts the goal for each one and hopefully it can help you guys determine which accounts that you want to use for your kids first account is a 529 plan and most of her money is invested in this account and that's just because this was the first account that i I ever opened for her I opened it using $15 per paycheck or $30 a month and it was invested into this plan and it's been open for about maybe about four years and I just recently got to a point where I can start investing a lot more than the 15 but a 529 plan it's basically a college savings plan or it can be used for K through 12 tuition but the downside of this plan is that if it's not used for qualified educational expenses then you may be facing penalties and taxes now obviously the goal for this account is to help her pay for a higher education but the world is changing right now so i don't really know how higher education is going to be pushed in the future especially as she ages closer to age 18 so i only have one 529 plan open i do not plan to open one for my son and my hope is that if she does not pursue a higher education i can just change the beneficiary from her her to my son and that way I don't have to face any taxes or penalties if this money is not used for qualified expenses now I do have a video all about 529 plans that I will link somewhere on the screen but this does have tax benefits as well um, these plans are normally state sponsored and they allow you to deduct the contributions that you have made from your state taxes up to the state's limit and you don't have to open up a 529 in your state if there's another state that you prefer you can open up a 529 in that state I live in Arkansas I just decided to go with Arkansas and I can honestly say that when it comes time to file my taxes I am able to deduct my contributions from my state income tax second plan that I have her funds invested in is an UGMA and this is a custodial account that acts like an irrevocable trust in the sense that when the child becomes of age whether that's age 18 or 21 just depending on the state the funds become um, legally theirs so the assets do belong to the child and now there are pros and cons with this account which is why it's so important to know your goal for the funds that you will be investing in every single account that you have so depending on that account type you need to know what the goal is for those funds. So with the UGMA, since it will be hers when she reaches age 18 or 21, I'm not investing that much in this account. I do not see this account as a way to build wealth for her because there's a good chance that she could get it and then she blows a portion of it on something stupid so I do not want to put more than five ten thousand uh, dollars just depending on how the the funds grow when she reaches age 18 I don't want to put more than that in this account because I don't want to see my money go but there aren't really many tax advantages with when it comes to this account and also the Depending on how much you invest in this account, unearned income can be taxed as you go. So right now as it stands, basically the first $1,100 is tax free and then the second $1,100 is going to be taxed but at a lower tax rate. So I don't know about you, but you have to invest there has to be a good amount in that account for you to even get to 
$2,200 in unearned income. And when I say unearned income, I'm talking about, you know, um, dividends and interest. Right now I have five figures in my savings account and I only earn like $75 in interest. So you can kind of do the math in your head to figure out how much you need in this type of account to be earning that much. But the goal for this account is just to give to my kids whenever they become of age, give them funds that they can stand on to use as a good solid foundation. So I'm not just thrusting them out into the world with no money, no resources. They're free to use this money on whatever. There are no exclusions. The expenses don't have to be qualified. So I see this as basically a gift and that is what UGMA stands for, Uniform Gifts to Minors Act. I see it just as that, me gifting her money when she comes of age and I just saw this as a better route than like you know a high yield savings or um, a traditional savings because the money is invested in assets like stocks and bonds therefore I'm getting more bang for my little buck because it's growing at a faster rate all right and drum roll please third account that she has is what I call the big mama. So she has a custodial Roth IRA and this acts just like a regular Roth IRA in my opinion. It's an individual retirement account but this is for minors who have earned income. Now your child is going to need earned income whether they are working for you, mowing lawns, whatever. They are going to need earned income for this account. So it's going to be kind of difficult if the child is not at an age where they can do any work. Now this is the account that I'm going to be using for her especially as she ages. I'm going to put most of my focus on her custodial Roth IRA because in my opinion it's just the best out of the three accounts that I have for her. Now when she does become of age then it will have to be transferred over to her. She'll open up her own account and it will be her her funds will be transferred transferred over to her own individual account but right now as she ages and as she earns more I will be able to shift my focus to make that the main account. Right now we do not have much in this account there's really not much I can do because you can only contribute up to what that child earns or the maximum contribution limit for Roth IRAs which is around six thousand dollars so whichever one is less if that child only earns four thousand dollars that year and the contribution limit for Roth IRAs is six thousand you have to go with the lesser of the two you can only contribute up to four thousand dollars I do not want to mess with the IRS <laughs> when it comes to this and so she only has maybe like a three four hundred dollars in this account that's as good as I can do right now it is a little hard to get this account to grow especially when your children are young because they're not going to be working consistently and I just want to make sure when it comes to my morals that I am acting according to my morals I don't want to put in more in this account than what she's actually earning and I don't want to mess with the IRS and now I have a video all about Roth IRAs but I say that this is the best of the three because the expenses or things that you can use the funds on are a lot less strict than a 529 plan so with the Roth IRA they can also use up to I think it's like ten thousand dollars for helping them purchase their first home they can use the funds for qualified adoption or um, birth expenses unreimbursed medical expenses they can use it for qualified education expenses to help them pay for school just like a 529 plan your contributions are made with post-tax dollars but when they are re reaching retirement age the distributions are not taxed so that is the benefit on that all right so that wraps up the investment accounts that I have for my daughter and the goal for each one and just a little recap she has a 529 plan to help her cover educational 
personal expenses. She has an UGMA so that I can gift her money when she becomes of age. And she also has a custodial Roth IRA for general wealth building. And I will also say that like, y'all, it's so important to have a specific goal when it comes to your finances because I was kind of like loosey goosey before I really locked in and narrowed on my focus on this goal. The panini or pandemic kind of crapped on my other goals and so I've just kind of been floating through the rest of the year just kind of doing my regular automatic contributions but not really having a focus so my motivation and inspiration really took a hit and it was hard to feel like I was really doing anything because I didn't have a goal to measure my progress. So now that I have a specific focus I find my myself being like more strategic when it comes to my spending and I'm motivated and I have that vision in my head again of that $10,000 and that helps me to make sure that my budgeting and everything is on point and it encourages me to continue to increase my income. So if you do not have a goal, it is almost 2023. I encourage you to start listing out all the things that you want to do. Pick one main focus and then use that main focus and your goals deadline to kind of reverse engineer and figure out what your strategy needs to be but hopefully this was really helpful for you guys and I will catch you all in the next one